Hi everyone, welcome Luhan and welcome to our Parallel Perception community. Thank you for joining me again today. We're going to continue our uh, video interview series. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well, Alyssa. Really lovely to see you again. Good to see you again too. So today I was really hoping to discuss a couple topics, um, mostly centered around spiritual community, dogma, and um, the true powers that we're going to need to develop as a human collective to move forward uh, into our cosmic community. So I just get started. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to start really simple, just breaking down what are these things um, as you see it, as you know it to be. So what is spiritual community? Um, maybe if you could just talk about the first forms of spiritual community that formed, um, that existed within our, uh, our historical uh, human evolution and what is dogma and also how did that first form um yes <laughs> <laughs> Gee, they're, they're really big, big questions, questions. yeah big big questions. Questions. <laughs> yeah um basically i mean if you really look at um, the world our worldwide community it's um, the framework uh, revolves around the, the vibratory essence that people can can track into or they can become come connected to uh, you know, so to, to have a spiritual community, you have to have uh, an open-hearted perspective in terms of understanding everybody's needs uh, in comparison to, to how they function. So if we really have a close look at it, um, every single spiritual community has a certain uh, parameters around it that say, well, we want to evolve, we want to be together, um, we want to try something different and we want to um, be high, more highly evolved. And uh, I do believe um, there was a community called the Essenes that, that have achieved this. And, um, and I believe this is what we really need to move into to actually achieve uh, communal consciousness, to, to, knock, to knock out the, um, uh, the social bias that is, that is captured within people's right to be a, to be a certain way and that certain way um, is habitually embedded inside of um, each individual as the justification to um, use dogma or use the idea of a bias to uh, to deconstruct uh, the elements of a, of a higher vibration community um, and backstep it into into a into a community at the moment not not in the past but at the moment uh, there's a the problem is that uh, that people bring their their, their high ideals of what they expect to exchange, but they end up exchanging um, their, their socially engineered conditioning in terms of um, uh, having, having the object of their attention uh, reflected inside of themselves. And then from that, that reflection, bouncing it back uh, to the community as, um, as, a, as a form of judgment instead of allowing people to be free to be exactly who they're, in, who they're really meant to be. And um, with that, Within, within that premise, you've, you've automatically got to be very, very open so that you can commune with someone honestly and ask them to honestly look at uh, of, of what's going on inside of them if there's no harmony. If there is harmony, then you just, you just step into the community and everybody understands uh, what needs to occur next in terms of how to evolve, uh, what's in front of us, um, how do we need to communicate to make sure we don't become entangled and and emphasize um, lower forms of entanglement in terms of lower emotions uh, like anger, greed, uh, lust, uh, <clears throat> sloth, being lazy or, or being demotivated because you feel entitled not to do something because you feel it's um, it's in the realm of somebody else's responsibility, not yours. And if you do see something, then it, it actually is your responsibility uh, to act upon what you notice and what you see. So that means we have each other's back without asking, can you please assist me? And um, if everybody would, would function in the way that um, they don't really need to be assisted, they can just put uh, the heartfelt feelings of being of service to the circumstance 
And when you do this, the only thing that can really manifest, manifest from truly putting yourself forward is gratitude. So, so when if you look at um, um, forms of power, anger is a power, jealousy is a power, resentment is a power, um, being obsessively um, identifying with with a point of reference inside of you that uh, that is unwholesome is a power, because the power entraps and it puts uh, a framework around. Uh, the power itself uh, for expression, then that power is then is then transferred to someone else, and then they reflect that power back to you in comparison to how they perceive that power. So these are these are low powers, <clears throat> and we're not really seeing that these powers um, define uh, certain certain levels of consciousness, and then then the game is on, because those 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 powers uh, loop and re are so repetitive. That it's, it's hard to escape, and that's where we are at the moment as a as a world community. But um, but if we look at the the power of um, of being compassionate, uh, the power of being compassionate uh, won't really arrive. The power of being of service won't really arrive until you feel grateful for being here, until you feel that um, I'm blessed, and feel grateful, and and see everything as a true blessing in comparison to to your to your being of service. So. Uh, how we can reverse engineer this is, is we can say well somebody has used an alternate power of me let's just say anger or jealousy or something like this um, you look at this particular power which has been projected towards you and you say well I can either engage in that and become entangled but then the power has emphasis and then amplifies from from the original uh, emphasis which is the person who created uh, the formula of projection the, per the person receives that formula of projection and then that projection becomes an alternate alternate perspective from from their viewpoint is how am I going to use this power against that power so then then there's a justif justifiable loop with those minor powers and what we don't realize is what we're using is a power which which will not release us to go to the next level of evolution of our evolutionary process. So, um, so the only way we can we can break through is to, is to become uh, grateful for someone being so generous to give us anger. And when we, when they give us anger, they they prompt us to and test us to say, okay, I've got this this uh, power that's come into my body. And I realize what it is. If I don't have a reaction point with inside of myself. Then that power um, is not uh, is not amplified in terms of my entanglement towards the power itself. So then, uh, the, the person can say, "Well, in the community, I'm so grateful that this has come towards me because it tests me not to become the ultimate version of that particular power." And then, then we break that particular cycle by being uh, being by being absolutely grateful that it's been sent to us, and so grateful that we know that we haven't become the alternate version of that particular power which has been put upon our put upon our being in terms of our reactivity. So if we're grateful, then we begin to realize that there's so much beauty around us and that um, no matter where no matter where anybody is, they are exactly where they're really meant to be. If you realize that someone is really is the only place they can be at that particular moment is where they're really meant to be to realize um, how the transformation of their whole being um, evolves from one position to another position only because the witness does not um, reinforce the the entanglement to to allow it to, be, to become so magnified that the person loses their sense of self and when they lose the sense of themselves that power is to totally taken over the circumstance and that is one of the problems with modern communities they don't understand these powers yeah mm -hmm. and even I mean, I, I know I just jumped into those big questions and I, I didn't give context as to why I'm looking at them, but what you just said brings me back to the feelings that I had inside of myself before um, uh, entering into a spiritual community. So when I was living and working in what people would consider um, the mainstream society. Um, there's multiple layered layers of community within that as well. So whoever's in your home, your family unit, your social unit, your um, work unit, and then the maybe the broader community of the city or the town, 
or the county um, region that you're living in. And definitely what I was seeing and uh, feeling was just um, a lack of that cohesive communal consciousness and maybe an excess of those minor forms of power that you mentioned, so anger, greed, um, lust, sloth. Um, manipulation is one of those powers. Manipulation, yeah. yeah. And then, now, then we're really going to talk about the positive powers. Yes, we do. In a, being in a state of gratitude is a power. It's a power which will, will, will cause um, destruction to the negative, to the negative ebbs and flow of the lower powers. So mm -hmm. when you when you look at destruction, it's not a negative thing. They will automatically de destroy themselves when the person realizes that what comes upon them is forgiveness. As soon as, as soon as someone feels forgiven, and they give it, they have enough room to actually unfold and to to disentangle, they end up uh, becoming uh, very 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 upset about uh, their predisposition and allowing them to cry and allowing them to realize is the release of the old power into into new paradigm and the power mm -hmm. of forgiveness the power of being grateful mm -hmm. the power of a blessing being blessed by by a negative being blessed by a negative prospect in comparison uh, to to seeing that negative prospect when you're grateful for that negative the, the power of your forgiveness and the power of your your understanding in terms of being grateful that you've been shown that the test of this transfer does not work then the power then gratefulness and the feeling of gratitude the feeling of compassion becomes the city and this is this is what we're not realizing that that everything is a power and everything generates a result from the power that you apply to the world and uh, if we can see that if we don't go into resentment because somebody's like this or somebody's like that, then the power inside of us, our heart will just will just open up tremendously. And uh, this is a slow process. And but but it's a process uh, which, if you're patient with, it may take 10, 20 years for your circumstances to change. And if you're persistent, that you stand strong, then the reward um, after a few years, it may happen momentarily. It may happen straight away. Mm -hmm. I'm, for, I'm sure for you it would happen straight away but but the the thing is if you have to wait then it's testing you to see whether you can uh, whether you can sustain yourself within the higher frequency in comparison to the lower frequency once you pass that test the world is so beautiful then you begin to realize what can I do for other people how can mm -hmm. I help how can I how can I really be of service and to give kindness to where, where kindness does not exist is a very, very important element to transfer to somebody else to, to allow them to realize they're being understood. That's a power. Mm -hmm. To allow someone to realize that they're understood. They're overwhelmingly revealed by that power of understanding. Yeah? So there, so there are so many mechanisms of our, of our communion uh, that can be... That can be um, applied to our to our living environment um, in every single aspect every single aspect of it to be grateful of everything to be grateful for everything i'm grateful for you it's being grateful for my wife being grateful for everybody who, who i come in contact with um, this this fills my chest with with so much positivity and for you too and everybody that does go through this they go through a high of this higher power and then they then they get tested and then they go down into a lower power and these lower powers are the, are the, are the form of collapse. And when they go into this collapse, then the lower powers try to re-establish the entanglement again. And we, if we realize this is what's occurring, we will not be pulled down to the lower powers. We will sustain ourselves in a, in a form of mourning to say, this is not right. This is not me. I just have to wait for a little while. Grace will come upon me. <laughs> yeah. And when it does, it becomes 10, time, ten times more more difficult to destroy these powers once they establish their footing within your being and then yeah. then if you collapse again you don't you don't ever collapse down to the original position and then when you come back to it so much more love so much more understanding and then your heart opens up to such a degree that that um they, there's a there's a form of uh, transmission to other people and they feel accepted even though you you don't even have to say i accept you all of a sudden they open up and no words are spoken because it, because these powers run on a frequency which uh, which which cannot really be recognized through thought forms but can be recognized through the most beautiful feelings you can obtain and these these feelings cause safety 
in a, in a sense of community and then a sense of what do I need to do for my neighbor? That's when you can truly do something for your, for your, for your community because you realize if I can see what needs to be done, I do it without even anybody asking me to do it. But if you have to ask someone to do it and they see it or they can't see it in there in the midst of it, what power has possessed them to, to allow them to be so blind? It's easy to see this. Once you recognize it, you start to navigate this. And this is, a, this is an extremely beautiful level of um, perception. There's um, two things I'm looking at. And one of them is in accepting that everything is happening within the realm of total perfection. So we're all exactly where we're meant to be. Um, in accepting that, I still would you know like that, to... You know, I'm going to bump into you there. <laughs> Yeah. Total, perf total perfection of the moment that you're in, you, you cannot be anywhere other than you're really meant to be. You're absolutely yeah. right. Everybody's in a perfect position, but the perfection of those perfect positions of, of discordance and, and non-discordance, um, the framework is, is, it, um, is it, it allows everybody to realize exactly where they are. And you're really meant to be where you're really meant to be. And the hardest position to change is the, is the most beautiful position to be confronted with. Because once it exchanges with you and that and that individual changes within their entrapments, they're really meant to be where they're really meant to be. But the but the opposing force, so the, ne the the positive force towards the negative uh, reality, um, it's needed so that the person can feel safe enough to unfold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful. <laughs> I feel that a lot of us are waiting for kind of severe external physical situations, circumstances or manifestations to step into the power of humility, the power of gratitude. However, um, maybe people are waiting until their deathbed, you know, waiting until they're sick with um, some terrible illness or waiting until something precious is taken away from them before they kind of simplify their attitude toward what what is um, truly worth being grateful for so i definitely i mean i hope that a conversation like this an interview with you um, will help shift consciousness forward and open heart so that honestly people don't have to go through that type of physical suffering in order to have an internal realization um, of what we're meant to grow into um, the other thing i wanted to touch upon from what you said was uh, about being being patient in those difficult moments and giving ourselves that sense of safety that we know we can wait. We can wait through those difficult times and we know grace will arrive upon us. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's from, you know, however, however a person would experience God, however a person would experience spirit or love, you know, whether it's um, by by oneself or with another person that they they care about, or with their pets, or with yeah. with trees. But you know um, the you know the most the most important thing you just expressed. When you when you look at somebody, I'm going to use you, you as an example because you're right in front of me. When I look at your your beautiful, youthful innocence and vibrance, this is God expressing itself through your form. So if I see this behind your beauty. I found a blessing. If I see this behind a 95 year old woman, it's still a blessing. If I see it in a child, it's a blessing. If I see it in an animal, it's a blessing. If you see it, see that someone's lost and they can't see their own blessings, this is a blessing. But if you see someone that's lost and you judge them, the blessing is, is subdued. Because the person who isn't in alignment is the greatest and the most substantial blessing that you can ever be shown. Mm -hmm. 
because it tests you. To reflect what you see in a beautiful young person that's got vibrancy, innocence and love inside of them, it tests you to see the same thing in, you know, in a in a person that's that's in a position which they believe they don't deserve and they believe everybody else deserves punishment mm -hmm. and they look for this return to themselves as well and this this is a blessing within themselves if you do not return what they expect then something very special is inside of you and this is what our eyes are meant to do that we went we're meant to listen to the world and define who we are in the internal arts, we listen, we listen to our internal process to define who we are and to discover the secrets within ourselves. So from an internal perspective, this has to be transferred to another human being. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what, what sort of a resistance am I seeing outside of myself? And, and um, why can't I touch this with, with an angelic um, reality of, of a smooth feeling of, of affection and love and compassion and gratitude for that particular person that, that has lost their way? This is a blessing because it shows you where you are and it shows you that the resistance outside you can see it so you soften yourself for the resistance outside when you do internal work what do you do you look for the resistance inside of yourself you soften your flesh and let it and let your consciousness go through it so it can be released but if you hold on to it what happens to the resistance inside your body it stays there because that resistance point reveals to you i'm resistant i've held you you hold it, that entanglement stays, so you can't drop through it. Exactly the same with the external world. So if you're truly in the internal world, the external world becomes your body. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is... Um... I actually wanted to read uh, two little passages from your website. So Luhan's uh, website is parallelperception.com where you could find out more about his books, um, upcoming courses, um, the, the essential of what low band pie is. But I'll, if I can go ahead and just read two snippets and I, I think it'll help me bridge into um, what is dogma and um, how, how we can have, how we can foster communion, community, and also spiritual independence and self-reliance within that community so that we can collectively avoid becoming dogmatic within ourselves and within our community um, and within our spiritual practice, especially, so that it doesn't become religion and then uh, warfare <laughs> or Execution yeah, well, of any that, form. <laughs> that's that's very interesting. Before you go on, that's very interesting because because I do believe that religions have been have been have been manufactured to keep us separate. The true religion is open your heart, be kind to your brothers and sisters, be kind to the animals. You you are here to protect this planet. You know, so so to even if you look at it even from the internal perspective, is that um is that if there's any form of dogma, it's like in the power of infinite, the mind and the and the feelings. If the mind is not there, it, it can't do anything but drop into the body and, and listen to the um, to the production of feeling that you've got inside of you. But if the mind's there, it becomes a thief. And if the ghost is then connected to this discordance, then the then you have a thief and a ghost that's totally operational. Mind is the thief, the ghost is the projection of a feeling which isn't really meant to be there. But we, but we all believe it's meant to be there because we've been trained to think this is okay and we've been given a destructive cycle which is destroying our world instead of having gratitude which is which is a beautiful destructive cycle because it destroys all the lower elements mm -hmm. so we've got to choose which one do we want but anyway you go ahead I'm, I'm nagging you well I'd like to, to extend off of that um, because I keep getting the visual of like modern day movies, like Marvel movies or superhero movies, and just the way that human collectiveness has been trained I, since movies have been made, I feel like is that we're trained to think about our lives as 
one linear movie and form stories about ourselves in relation to what we've experienced and then from the stories we hold on to we um yeah we start to perceive the world through the lens of that of that story but that story itself is totally limited because it's only from our perspective and it's from a reinforced perspective that maybe we've left out certain little elements of other things that actually uh, happened at that time and just keep on reinforcing the same emotional element of maybe victim being a victim to something or um, I guess that's the, the simplest form of it feeling victim and and not feeling that what happened um, had greater meaning had a greater purpose other yeah. than just punishment if you if you add victim and entitlement to victim you've mm -hmm. got social engineering yeah essentially that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> Do you know just to um, before you read from the website i'm sorry i'm interrupting you but if you if you really look at this when i was younger i, I worked in um in in a factory and when i worked in the factory they they really didn't believe that i had um any form of intelligence which was useful so what i did was was i watched everything very very carefully and forgot myself and worked out all the routines as i worked all the, uh, at all the routines i began to uh preempt what needed to be done as i was preempting pre what what needed to be done they didn't really realize how hard I was working and I was solving problems before they even appeared because I worked out the routines. Now, in terms of entitlement and, and being a victim, when you, when you go to work, you expect, I go to work, I bring my problems to work, I feel resentful that I've got to work, I feel resentful, res resentful not only get paying, getting paid this much to work, but I didn't have that attitude. When I went there, I, I didn't bring home to work, I just emptied myself and nothing nothing was available apart from what was in front of me. So so when we look at from social engineering perspective, I didn't feel entitled. I felt I just wanted to solve all the problems. So they got so got really smoothly. After about six months of doing this, everybody all everybody was looking at me and in, in the beginning they were very suspicious. What's going on here? Um, this guy shouldn't be able to do this because he's not educated and uh, he can't he can't possibly have the capacity to work out what needs to be done and as the months and years went by they realized that um that oh something needs to be done but it's already been done and they're looking around how come this got done and then they realized i was doing it so so then they could relax their control issues over the whole circumstance because i know when people come into the work we've got to control these people because they don't want to work they want to bring the mentality of of the disharmony from home to work and this this then emanates into the work environment where when you're in the work environment nothing exists apart from the work environment nothing exists so when you when you go home the work environment doesn't exist either you go home and you be loving you come to work and you work so but if you entangle both together then people have entitlement entitlement and re resentment and they can't really do anything properly because they don't feel they need to do it unless they're told to do it when they're told to do it they, they get resentful because they've been told to do it when they knew they could do it anyway without being told <laughs> so so then it came to the point this is exactly what you what you were just saying but it was in the context of of the reality of what people are really expecting in terms of i don't really want to be here but i'm here but they are there so they have to be there so they know that they've got to be exactly in that position and the only thing that relieves them of there is as a resent from from being there is saying well i'm going to do what i need to do for you because i need to relieve you of your pressure if I relieve you of your pressure, there won't be a backflow of resentment towards all the workers because we always have to tell you what to do. But if but if everybody does what they need to do, then they go, oh, we're free. These mm -hmm. these guys know what to do. Then they concentrate on making the, the business uh, very, very successful. And everybody works together as if they're one being. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm going to keep ping-ponging off of that. Yeah. I see a, another another side of it too is people who who don't resent going to their workplace or to their organization but they go because going and having a particular role usually if they're in leadership or management or the upper um, part of the hierarchy they go because having that role gives them a sense of identity and fulfillment that suppresses resentment that they haven't been willing to face with 
within themselves. So then playing out a role to get some sort of、um, gratification in terms of being recognized by people who are lower than them in position.、Um, I don't know where I'm going with. Oh, I know exactly、other. where you're going. You're going exactly. <laughs> you 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 got it. But the thing is, you've actually got it. If I use my lower powers to be in that situation, if I'm a boss and I use these lower powers of resentment, control, anger, greed, and、uh, judgment, then obviously that power is going to be transferred as an entanglement to someone who's got anger, greed, and resentment. And and a form of of non-alignment with where they are because they want to be somewhere else. All these powers are self-destructive. So the it's a very very destructive cycle, but a self-destructive cycle. Yes. So you you de, you des if you have a a task, then you you destroy the task by giving it 100% of your priority. And when that task is done, it disappears. And then you what's next? What's next? What's next? You know, and when you're looking for what's next, and you're waiting for what's next, your energy is so high. But if you if you say, well, there's the task, I'm going to take as long as I can. I attach all my le- lower powers to it. I'll go so slow that I I can dawdle, and then I can say, well, I'm working, but I'm not really working, and I'm doing my job. Don't tell me to hurry. But if I but if I do my job job with due diligence, then you can say what's next, and you're happy about it. And you use a higher, higher level of feeling in terms, in terms of your gratitude. Right. But anyway, blah blah blah. Okay. There's still one more thing I want to say now, which is、um, recognizing all of these, both of these facets, and then also recognizing. Okay, there's the element of what we bring to our environment because I know for myself, I remember when I was working,、um, and I was working in dentistry. I would, I wouldn't tell my patients necessarily, but I would empty myself and ask for God or ask for life to work through me to whatever is what would be the greatest benefit to my patient, whoever was with me in that moment in my chair. And one of the things I loved about dentistry is all of my focus would just go, you know, to one thing, one person, and、um, everything else would drop away. And like you said, <laughs> when I would go there, everything would drop, and when I would go home, the whole day of dentistry, for the most part, would drop unless there was something that was disharmonious that needed to be processed through my through my body, through my understanding, or relieved.、Um, Emotionally,、uh, to someone who could receive me,、um, but what I'm what I'm looking at and why I stepped away from that field of work, at least for now, is because I recognize that、um, something just wasn't healthy about the overall system that I was working in, in terms of.、Um, Having that life force constantly going one directionally and not being replenished、um, uh, energetically—I'm not talking financially,、mm-hmm. uh, just energetically <clears throat> replenished as a unified organism、um, to sustain itself. You know, so I—that's why I am looking at okay, how. How can I, in my life now, take some time, enter into spiritual community? The way that it exists in the world now is seems so separate from mainstream community. But t- to do this and imbibe some element of understanding and help make the world <laughs> really what it should be, which is one big、uh, community, one big operate as one cohesive organism.、Um, That's all. <laughs> That's not really a no, question. No, but but it's it, what you're saying is absolutely the truth. It really is. We, we've we've really got to see that we we really are one. We're one body. We're one organism. Because even if I look at your background, there you've got trees in the background. I mean, you're breathing by virtue of these trees. We're we're a community of organisms that、uh, that su- that supply exactly what we need. So we've got to stop fiddling with our environment, trying to change or make our environment evolve in a way which is not really beneficial for. For us as human beings, so 
it, it, it is really true. But we're, the, f the first step of what we've got to do is, is actually uh, displace the mind so it does not entangle with an emotion. Once we once we can displace our mind and, be, and and become universal, universal mind is that I'm not going to be um, entangled with the lower power. If universal mind then entangles with a higher power, then that higher power doesn't uh, have a location inside. You do have a beautiful heartfelt feeling, but the entanglement of the higher higher powers they they're voluminous in terms of their communal effect and. Uh, the, I, I believe what the, the main thing that people are making a mistake with in the community is that they're, they're bringing the, the social engineering into the into the communities which are mean, which are meant to be revealing uh, what is our true spiritual growth? How do we spiritually grow by not having these lower powers by sustaining the higher uh, emphasis upon the right powers? But how can you do this by working? without expecting anything in exchange. The only thing you, you when you go into a community community like that, the only thing you really can expect in, in exchange is tiredness and sleep. <laughs> because you joyously do everything without any regard for yourself because you're so involved in your task. And when you do this, you forget everybody. You don't can't be entangled in a drama if you're if you're doing exactly what needs to be done in, in, in front of you to build the community so it's wealthy. And then when it's wealthy, you look around, the energetics will be so clean because you involved the whole, whole your whole spirit's involved in building a building. And then when you finish that building, when you when you put your wholehearted feelings in that without any engineering prospect of, oh, I feel tired and everything like this, when you when you finished, you walk into it. It's the right measurements, it's the right shape, and it has the right feeling. Because the feeling that you put in was, I'm going to work for this and I'm working for this building and the building will yield to me the feeling of my work towards it because it is my creation. So you you become like a, um, what, now I don't want to make this sound very, very strange, but but you created it. So aren't you, aren't you the creator of that situation and shouldn't what you create reveal back to you exactly who you are? So when we look at the, our universal creator, what what uh, what do you think happens? We, we, we're created. The reflection back is to feel gra gratitude for being created, but we've forgotten that something created us. The same way we create a building, the same way we clean a house, the same way we touch somebody's hand and say, I love you, don't worry, it's going to be okay. We've got to be an absolute reflection of something which is guiding and watching us. And if we realize something is guiding and watching us, isn't it so that we have to be watching everything else from this perspective? We're guiding ourselves to build something beautiful, We're guiding ourselves to create a beautiful relationship. And then it reflects back to us the beauty of, of that non-attachment. But the attachment is so beautiful. Freedom is so beautiful. But it doesn't have these small minor uh, petty attachments of I need to be repaid for this. The repayment is the joy of just being exactly who you're really meant to be at that particular moment. And then go to sleep when you're so tired and wake up with joy. And do it all over again. Because if we do it with a negative, we'll go to bed with a bad feeling and wake up and do it all over again. So we have to make a choice. Which one do we want? We're going to be exhausted if we're negative and wake up and feel negative and oh gosh, we're going to do this all over again. Put your whole heart and soul into everything. And then wake up and do it all over again. Which one do we choose? Second one. <laughs> Can I read the two passages from your Yes, mind? of course. Okay. So, the first one, it's right on the top. It's a uh, love and pie is a comprehensive art that enlivens reservoirs of empathic communion through movements that inspire feelings of heartfelt gratitude. This in turn manifests a true internal standpoint of personal power that brings a genuine ethical view to the forefront of the witness. Comprised of elegant movement sequences and profound awareness techniques with a deeply meditative core, 
Float and Pi recalibrates perception away from a socially engineered mindset toward a heart-based approach. And uh, the second passage kind of skips forward a little bit is, we must realize that no spiritual practice of substance can be made concrete for concreteness becomes a viable method of bias, which can only be turned into dogma as a belief system to be rigidly held. When we create shengengs, we unlock our fields of bias into a momentary experience of intangibility that contains so many possibilities. This reactivity then has to be recalibrated into the practical points that allow us to move forward or not. We have to be immediate enough to realize what can be done and what cannot be done within the moments that arrive. So, I mean, I really appreciate Loban Pai. Um, now, the, the first thing we'd probably have to ask, yeah. what is a Shen, mm -hmm. what is a Shen Gong? Yeah. Now, Shen, the Shen Gong, uh, through the movements, um, if I do this, uh, this is a Shen Gong, and it draws it by, via the vortex, via the vortex created by the hands, it, it creates a porthole that can, that can draw spirit into the physical form, because we're looking for an alternate spirit in terms of our spirit mind, and our, or our spirit body, or, or our realizations, which aren't held within the confines of a, of a limited view. That's all. So, so when we look at this, and you go to the to the next saying, is it can we act or can we not not act? And this is very very important. Where we can act, we act. Where we cannot act, we observe. And when we cannot we when we cannot act, we observe without resentment. We observe without know, knowing that this interchange is a test for us to see that we can stay stable within the within the parameters of our heart consciousness to witness something that we cannot put anything negative upon because that negativity arose from the, from the witness before it becomes a viable uh, projection upon somebody else. If we realize this, we'll stop doing this. Once we stop doing this, then then reality becomes quite beautiful in terms of being grateful that that uh, if that wasn't there, it wouldn't have tested me to see exactly who I'm really meant to be for that person, for that moment, for myself. And it's more for that person, that moment, not for myself because I don't exist, but I exist in 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 the in the um, in it reveals where a person is because what arrives inside of a person when the mind does not exist uh, the, the the solar plexus will rise and enter the throat and allow you to speak on behalf of what you see or allow you to realize on behalf of what you're seeing and as you realize a blessing has come upon you that rise that 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 arises from the neurotransmitter of the heart so so the so the 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 living essence of our heart uh, then reveals the, the un universal capacity of entanglement to actually see that there's a three-dimensional three world around us that needs to be put through the consciousness that abides within us, that does not have any religious dogma surrounding it, only the kindness and the love and the openness of, of that um, disentangled view to know that it's entangled to a certain degree, but not to, to a degree that destroys the, the process of being uh, Put in the position of being grateful, and gratitude is all that matters. Without gratitude, you can't you can't have compassion. Without gratitude, you can't really see what needs to be done and what can't really be spoken to, or what can really be spoken to. And this is magical. So that means that the witness has to dis disappear from the from their self-identifiable point of gratification. Of, look at me, look at me. It has to be I'm seeing you, and I and I'm I'm going to be tested to keep loving you. And if that test fails, I failed. So if we don't have gratitude, there's a failure there. So if you see this as a, as a, as not as a pre-programmed you're failing, but a program to say, I'm tested to be better than what I am. I'm tested to be bigger than what I am. I'm tested uh, to do more than what I what's expected of me. Gratitude is a superpower. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so so even if we speak like this, the self the self reflective response of your internal process goes really soft. Because it falls into love, it falls into an endearment. I can see it. It falls into endearment. All of a sudden you have this endearment inside of you. It's not because of me, because it exists inside of you. You found you. And when you find you, I see myself coming through your eyes. That's a true blessing. That is true understanding. That's the only entanglement we need to pursue. And that entanglement is so soft and so generous, so loving, so open, that that the social dogma cannot exist within this within the within the realm of, of this consciousness. But this consciousness does not have the lower powers commanding the mind, because the mind is already automatic. It's an automatic process to to awaken the, uh, the our abilities as, as human beings to obtain the powers that we're meant to obtain: kindness, love gratitude, compassion, being of service, growing love in the garden, the garden of Eden. Who would throw you out of your own heart? Who throws you out of your own heart? Once I've said this, who would throw you out of your own heart? You do. Why do you throw yourself out of your own heart? because you didn't understand what you were meant to understand. So if you can't understand it, you get thrown out of your, your the threshold of abundance to having a lesser abundance. And you go, oh, I don't want to be here, I want to get back. But when you go, when you're thrown so far away from your original point, it's difficult to get back because you forget. And you forget through entanglement. You forget through, through habitual alignment. That habitual alignment, the person says, oh, this is me. I'm used to it. You're going to do that and I get used to you. Ooh. This is exactly the opposite of what we're talking about. So then we go back to the positive. What we should be looking at is, is the beauty, the softness and the realization. And this is, this is, um, uh, a form of, sh it's Shakti. It's a transmission. It's um, it's the transmission that something beautiful, something empty is in our reality. Shiva. Something exists because nothing is there. Nothing is there because something exists. But when nothing exists, everything becomes available. And the vibratory essence of nothing has so much beauty inside of it because the, because the subtle frequencies are so refined, so beautiful. This is something that we really need to steep ourselves in every day as much as possible because like you said it's so easy to forget and well, we have to change that it's yeah. not easy it's so easy to remember it to is remember. so easy to remember <laughs> too it's easy to forget and yeah. remember it, no when you look at it it's so easy to to remember what we've forgotten because we don't like we most people in in the world at the moment say i don't like where i am because because i can't remember who i'm really meant to be because who i am mm. is not who i'm really meant to be right so if if i'm acting like who i'm not really meant to be i'm isolated and alone right. i'm no longer connected i'm no longer um uh, have this have this um web-like feeling that as soon as i pull on a thread eyes look at me and say what do you want we, we we're we're here for you mm -hmm. but we lose that web we go pulling on we need assistance everyone's self-centered so they, they're not in the web anymore mm -hmm. There's a cosmic web. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a fascial web. There is a photons surrounding us. This is a this is a web-like um, entanglement that uh, that is quite extraordinary. The moment we feel uh, the photons vibrate and emanate who we are, 
verify and validate that our, our creation exists. Once we realize this, we have the power to change it. I like my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that whoever's watching this video, if if, um, if you're watching this and you enjoyed or found any sense of up upliftment um, from this conversation, from what Luhan shared, even if you, um, after you're done watching the video, if you uh, start to talk to yourself and I don't really understand that or no, that's that's a bunch of foo-foo and that can't work in my life or I um, I just have too many other things going on right now or uh, if you just can't logically make sense of it it's okay and I would just encourage each person to not just listen to us and and make a mental uh, story about this video but you know maybe get a little curious go to the website parallelperception.com um, take a course there's online courses and in-person courses and experience for yourself within your own body have your own realization of whether or not these things become a living reality for you whether or not there's any real substance or value in um, navigating the world this way uh, from a heartfelt perspective uh, of offering yourself rather than looking at what you can get because because anyway the truth is I, I mean i really feel when i offer myself completely i get so much more than what i offered and that so much more um is inward and and outward um and it's such a beautiful feeling that even if the outward doesn't manifest a certain way, the inward feeling is is more than rich enough. Um, but again, yeah, each person we're here to discover for ourselves and take that responsibility upon ourselves while we have the physical capacity to use our body, use our energies, our intelligence in such a way that we make the most out of our life here and not... Um, base our life off of what, uh, you know, society or stories or movies have told us about, oh, when you're young, you should just be frivolous and uh, spend all your energy on socializing and um, creating some image of yourself to get some gain for yourself or um, when you're older, you should just not do anything and let your body <laughs> fall away and let your um, let your vision of your life close up and expect to just die basically you know we we have the capacity and so we have the responsibility to uh, discover ourselves and and help our our human family move forward in, in a more beautiful way so. <laughs> Yes, that's all. <laughs> Luhan, would you like to close? Because I, <laughs> I shouldn't be telling people what to do. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you're beautiful. You know that uh, it is really true. The only thing we can do is 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 grow uh, in the garden of our chest the prosperity of what's really mean, meant to be there, and the fruits of abundance will occur as long as you're gracious enough to let go of the responses that you've been trained to do and to enact upon your environment. If you can not do those, something will do you. First, it'll be other people will come in and then you'll realize them. 
And as soon as you become adapt to this, something else will integrate. And that other, something else will integrate is, is very, very beautiful. Um, yeah. I have an image. Yeah. It's like, rather than, you know, seeing yourself as an, as an island, as isolated from everything, as if it's just you in this big world all by yourself, being pressed upon by these circumstances that make you feel it's so hard just to survive. The image of that is like you're in the ocean on a tiny boat with a tiny <laughs> row and you're just trying to row and the waves are just pushing you and it's like you can't get anywhere and you're all by yourself and it's such a tragic, heartbroken feeling, you know, versus stepping into into the love that's already abundant that connects all of us once we step into that field it's like oh the wind is pushing your boat and and everybody's everybody's there with you and it doesn't have to be so hard and so mm. alone you know the 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 i really believe that the only thing that everybody needs to do on the planet is drop the negative response and accept everybody that's in your environment. As soon as they're accepted, you'll see that there will be an exchange. Acceptance, we need to accept our partners, we need to accept the limitations of anything and everything that's around us. Those limitations and accepting those limitations will then break those limitations. They will not exist once you accept them. But when you don't accept them, those limitations get stronger. Those barriers get stronger. Once we realize as soon as we're in a state of acceptance, then then the um, the exchange becomes very, very beautiful. Everything counts. Everything counts, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thank you so much. This was so beautiful. And um, thank you to our Parallel Perception community. Uh, we hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Thanks so much for, for, for doing this interview with me, Alyssa. I love you so much. You're so beautiful. I love you so much too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you and Mo Van Pai for, yes. Okay. Really, thank you. yes. Thank you, everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take care. Okay. okay, love you. Bye.